Welcome to the Level Up Lifestyle Podcast from Globe Life Liberty National, where your story meets your success for the lifestyle you've always wanted. We're so glad you're here. We've invited our top performers, executives, and strategic partners to share their story and journey to success. So let's check out today's conversation. Mike sits down for our first ever live audience podcast recording with agency owner of the year, Tim Knuckles. Tim walks us through the entire evolution of his mindset, starting with the roots of his work ethic as a kid. My father owned an electrical contracting business. He started from scratch and I grew up going to work with him every once in a while. To allowing himself to be coachable in order to grow. The other thing I did, Mike, is I humbled myself and I went to my manager and said, man, I, I need you to get back in the car with me. To crafting a mindset that set him apart as a leader. I can't, as a leader, allow myself to get stagnant, allow myself to not show up on Mondays. Right. All of this coming up next on this special edition of the Level Up Lifestyle. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, welcome to the Level Up Lifestyle podcast. So excited to have you guys here. Uh, We are coming to you live from Globe Life headquarters in McKinney, Texas. And uh, before we get into you, Tim, and introduce you and get into your story, uh, let me just... I guess set the table for the people that are listening in thinking, is that a live studio audience? That sounded a little different than, than normal. So, uh, so what's happening today uh, here at Globe Life? We're so excited. We have a Globe Life University happening right now for our Liberty National agents. Uh, we've got 140 people packed into the room that we call the venue with a, a million dollar investment into this room uh, to uh, provide a great platform uh, for learning and development. And so this Globe Life University 101 Academy, we've got our brand new supervising agents, people taking that first leap into leadership, getting started, building their team, growing their organization as well. So we're so so excited to have all these people here. We spent about three days in a Globe Life University just giving them the tools and the skills to be a better leader, build their agency up, create opportunities for other people. And we thought, you know, what better way to kind of capstone the third day than just fly Tim down here and have a podcast. Yeah, there we go. Right? So Tim, welcome. Thank you. Tim, you, um, you're you in your 12th year <laughs> as an agency owner, yeah? Yes. Okay. Going, on, going on 12 years. Uh, and you have four offices. Springfield, Missouri is, is the main hub. Yeah? Yep. yep. Wichita, Kansas, Des Moines, Iowa, St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. Uh, last year, as an agency owner, you wrote over $9 million in production. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yep. Nine and a half million dollars. Uh, in, in, in fact, uh, that is the second most production from any agency owner of the 56 agency owners in Liberty National that you wrote. I'm not trying to rub in the right, second yeah, no. most, but you know, it's, uh, it is, and it's only the, the second time anyone's ever been over $9 million in a year. So, you know, you're, you're out in front, you're leading the way, uh, you're doing a fantastic job. You're promoting people, uh, to the agency owner position. You're promoting people into the home office and into various roles as well. So just got a ton of success, uh, at, at your heels as well. Um, not only that, you're on our Council of Champions, which are the, the top agency owners in the organization that are getting it done uh, across all avenues measured. And, and I don't want to forget and leave off that you are the 2023 Agency Owner of the Year as yeah. well. Thank you. All right. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate that. Just, uh, just a fantastic <laughs> career. I know you're not done yet. Um, but uh, let's, you know, kind of like we talk about in the Level Up Lifestyle uh, podcast, the, the theme for season two that we're in the middle of here is, is mindset, right? What's the mindset at various points in your career and in your life? And how did that shape you into the leader and the person that you are today? So, so what I want to do is, you know, let's go back. Let's, let, let's fire up the way back machine, the time machine. And, uh, you know, take me to, uh, you know, Tim Knuckles, in the beginning, before you you had all these accomplishments, tell me tell me about uh, tell me about your life. Where'd you where'd you start out? Where were you born, raised, all that? Yeah, I grew up in in Southern California. Okay, um, 
Did you do any surfing as a kid? Did a, did not, s- a little bit of surfing, not not a whole lot. You know, I had the blonde blonde hair, blue eyes, but, yeah. you know, had the mountains, so we skied a little bit, okay. surfed a little bit. Um, but I actually moved back to Missouri when I was eight. But in Southern California, my, my, my father... Um, owned an electrical contracting business. He started from scratch and, and built up. So, um, you know, I grew up, uh, going to work with him every once in a while, you know, and, and I can remember from the time I was seven years old, he'd take me out to the jobs. I'd be screwing on plates. Um, so I give him a lot of credit and my parents, a lot of credit for really installing a, a work ethic in me. So, so your dad is, he's running his own business. He's a business owner. Yes. And what type of hours is he working when you're a kid? Yeah, so, I I mean, my dad was gone at 4.30 in the morning, getting back at at 6 o'clock at night, you know, and that's Monday through Saturday. You know, it wasn't five days a week. It was six days a week. And and so, uh, you know, anytime you... you're going to start a business and build something for yourself. You're going to put in the time you're going to put in the hours. And, and, you know, I remember the early years when he had started doing that, obviously things were a lot, lot tighter, right? Like he was, was working really hard and, and, and building something. So he was, he was gone a lot, you know, but that gave him freedom down the road that most people never get. Um, but I can remember going to work and, you, you know, Summertime, especially, right? All, all us kids were at home, and I think my mom probably said, "Hey, get them out of the house." Yeah, <laughs> you know. So, so we go to work, but then I remember getting back home after work and still had to mow the lawn, and still had to clean up the dog mess, and and do yeah. some of those things, and and really a lot of the stuff that that he did and, and and the way he raised us has carried over into the industry we're in now. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. I mean, how much does that just from a formative year standpoint that hey, you know, you're you're eight, nine, ten years old. I'm assuming something like that. Yeah. And and in the summer, the kids, you know, let's go ride bikes. Let's go just out. And you come home when it gets yep. dark out, and and you're out working. Yeah. With your dad, and then you come home. It's like, hey, you got to move on. You know, does that stuff carry with you oh, later sure. on into life? And and you use that as your work ethic now? Yeah. I mean, I you know, I I haven't always been in insurance, right? Sure. So so in, in the other careers, I was part of, it, it definitely carried over. You know, I believe that you can get ahead of 80% of the people in any career field just by working hard, you know, by yeah. putting in the effort, by doing more than what most people expect. Yeah. So, so you grow up in California. How yeah. do you end up in Missouri? So my parents were actually born in St. Louis. Okay. And, and so, um, had an uncle that owned a resort on Table Rock Lake and we used to vacation back there. And, and so, uh, really the, the rat race in Southern California, my parents just got tired of it and they'd done well in their, their contracting business. They decided, Hey, we're going to move back to Missouri. And okay. you know, I was in the eighth grade. So obviously I had to come back to Missouri with them. That was so, a bit of a transition. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. We went from Southern California to, uh, moving. Luckily we moved in the summertime on a lake to a town with population 150. Wow. So, so it was a big transition. You know, I remember going to eighth grade and, um, it was really like an old brick uh, barn and, you know, with, with a hundred students in the sixth, seventh and eighth grade combined surfer kid from California. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, so, but you know, luckily man, you you know, the Midwest people welcome you. It's a, it's great opportunity, but, but yeah, it was. So again, I saw my dad start his business over again, you know, from scratch in a new location and built the whole and built the whole thing. again. Wow. Yep. Okay. So I worked with him through through high school, through college, you know, on the weekends coming back and 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 working. And um, are you getting paid or are you? Are oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. My dad's definitely going to pay you, right? Okay. Like, so I was the the eight, nine, ten year old kid that would carry cash with him, right? Like, so yeah. so it was pretty cool. But you know, you earned that, and my dad made you earn it, right? Like yeah. you were working, you weren't just going to the job and you know throwing rocks or or whatever. So you're the ten year old, you know. You take your friends out to ice creams. Like I'm gonna buy. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, I got, I got the cash here. Right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I definitely remember some, some early moments where I realized that, you know, to get ahead, get ahead in life, you, you put in the effort. Yeah. Because I saw my dad do it over and over. Sure. Sure. So the, the transition. How would you say that it affected you? Just, you know, coming in eighth grade. That's, that's an interesting moment in people's lives. Yeah. Right. So. And we're talking about mindset, right? And you're going down to being being a kid and having that that mindset of transition. You know, what what's going through your head at this point? You know, you're in the car driving across the country. Yeah. Um, what's gonna happen? 
how does this impact you later on? Like, what? Take us through that a little bit. Yeah, you know, I played a lot of sports okay. growing up: football, basketball, baseball, mostly basketball and baseball in high school. Um, but I remember getting back there, and and that's something I relied on, you know. And and again, that work ethic that my dad taught me really helped me in the sports, you know. Okay. So I was able to get ahead and 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 really immediately got a lot of friends through those sports and and luckily when we moved back um had had a couple of different neighbors that were uh about my age so so was able to hang out with them and 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 get involved with a really good group of friends okay good 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 so as you're going into to high school what mm-hmm. what what do, you, what do you think i mean are you thinking pretty much like let's just just jump straight into insurance and go from there because it seems like a very logical yeah. transition in your life. So where, what, what are your thoughts going into high school? Are you going into college? Are you trying to get out of the family business? Like, What, what are you thinking about the life is going to hold for you? No, I, I was definitely working with my dad. Um, made really good money going through high school, right? I worked every weekend, would, would work some evenings when, when we had the chance. But um, and then through college had worked on the weekends with him and, and, you know, through my six years of college, you know, so it took me a little bit longer than most people, but, but, um, you know, it was just a natural progression just to keep working with him. Um, so did that and then, and then, uh, have cousins in, in Southern California that they were in the electrical business as well. So Melissa and I got married at an early age. I think she was 19. I was, I was 21. So, you know, that was one advantage of moving back to Missouri. I met my wife in high school and, um, so in high school, yeah, we met in high high school. school. She was, she was actually, um, the first time I met her, she was 13 and I was 15, but I decided she was a little too young. So I waited a year. Yeah. Yeah. A so. little bit of time. Yeah. So, right. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, so we've been together a, a, a long time, but we started having kids, you know, she was 19 when we got married, I was 21. Um, and just, you know, kind of naturally figured, Hey, we moved back to Southern California. I can make more money, do, do well. And, and so we moved back there, um, for a okay. couple of years, work for my uncle. And, and you're thinking, because that's where you saw your dad's business yeah. take off. You thought yeah. opportunities better there. Yeah. yeah. It was just more opportunity really. Okay. Um, but got back out there and, and did, I'm sorry, did you have family in California? Cause yeah. so your mom and dad are there and I'm sure Melissa's family yeah. is in Missouri. So, you know, here you are again at that age, leaving home sometimes is hard for people, you know, let alone I'm going to leave home and then you're going to move all the way across the country to Cal. Now you had been in California for a while. Yep. Right. And I don't know if Melissa had really had any experience on, on the West coast. So it's a totally different culture. It's a different everything. So, I mean, just take us through that. You know, what, what do you think, like what's driving you to make that type of a decision? Cause that's a pretty big, yeah. big turn for people. Really? It was, it was finances. You know, I, I, I thought, Hey, we can, we can get ahead. We move out there. There's more opportunity. But when my parents had actually moved to California, you know, after they got married, um, my grandparents had moved out there. Some aunts and uncles had moved out there. So we had quite a bit of family. So when, when Melissa and I moved, we'd pre- pretty much every Sunday go over to my grandparents' house and, okay. and, and, and spend some time with them. And then we had aunts and uncles. And like I said, I worked with my cousin. So, so, so you're not going completely into the unknown. No, not, but it, not, but not at all. It's still a transition. It sure is. Yeah. I mean, Southern California versus Reed Spring, Missouri is a huge, <laughs> yeah, huge difference. And, and, and my wife came from moved down from Des Moines, Iowa. So she's always been in the Midwest. So it was, it was eye opening for her for yeah. sure. Yeah. You know, we, we, we had another child out there. Our second child, um, Jordan, um, was born out there and, and, uh, and I'll never forget. Um, he was actually born in a hospital that, um, you're, you know, low income, right? Like, like it wasn't, uh, we didn't have insurance. So he was born. So you're um, starting out. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. You know, I, I when we first got married, uh, we lived in a single wide trailer. So, so you know, everything wasn't just given to us. We we had to really work work hard to. I, I remember, you know, buying that trailer, and our parents were like, "What are you buying a trailer for? That's you know, it's going to go down in value." And and it was it was kind of a, a cool moment when we sold it for five thousand more than we bought it for. Right? Like that was <laughs> that was that was a great investment. That that single wide trailer. You're but right, your parents know that. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But. Um, so we started having kids. We had, we had our second child out in California and, and man, it, I just decided and talking with Melissa, it's just re- really no p- place we want to raise our kids, you know? So we wanted to get back to the Midwest. 
what was what was the business doing at this point? Because you you go out there for business, yeah. And it, you know, is the business growing? Is the business doing well? Yeah. Well, obviously, so, you started from a single wide trailer, but are, yeah. are you are you progressing, or is that influencing your decision to move? Yeah, you know, we were doing all right out in Southern California. The thing at age twenty one, I didn't really think about was you know, you can go out to California and make a lot more money, but you're going to spend a lot more money. Yeah, sure. You know, the cost, cost of living is, is crazy and taxes. And, and so, yeah, I was, I was working with my uncle and, and it was a thriving business for sure. But I hadn't, you, you know, that, that was kind of the point where I was realizing that really, unless you build something for yourself, you're never really going to get to where you want to get in life. And I was talking to myself. Gotcha. So, so you're, you make this decision that we're going to go to Missouri. Yep. We're going to go build it for us. So did you start the business over again? Is this another reset or what? what's that transition like now? So we, we moved back, you know, it was just kind of spur of the moment, right? We're so young and, and, yeah. and so got back and I decided, hey, I, I didn't really want to stay in that part of the industry because I wanted to build something for myself. But you know, we got back and I needed to make money. So, uh, I, I had met a guy that was working for direct TV and it was the time where, where the satellites or the direct TV and dish were getting the local channels for the first time. And, and so there was a lot of work. And so it was really the first time in my life where, when I got started working for them that I realized, Hey, if you, if you do more, if you work really hard, if you, if you do the things other people do, don't, you know, that aren't willing to do, you're going to make a lot of money and you're going to do really well. You know, I think my first year with direct TV, I made $120,000. And, really? and so what year is that? Um, this would be 2001 so right in it, there. It, it, you said 120,000. Yeah. yeah it, which is a lot of money today, but yeah. you know, 2001, it's even yeah. more, right. Yeah. You know, obviously, you know, um, what <clears throat> just take us through the thought process, the things going through your mind here, because you, you went to college, right? You've yep. got, a successful family business kind of at your back that you can lean into, you know, your uncle's helping you in California. I'm sure your dad's maybe saying, Hey, yeah. come back into the family business when you, when you move to Missouri. And you know, I, I don't, I don't want it to sound the wrong way, but you, you decide to go install satellite TV, which isn't glamorous. Sure. It isn't, you know, something that maybe people just necessarily like, Hey, that's what I want to go do now. So, why? What, what's, the, what's the reason for that abrupt turn? So my dad was getting closer to retirement, okay. and he actually had kind of transitioned out of the contracting part of the, electro, to the electrical business and started his own lighting and electrical supply shop. Okay. And so, um, you know, it was just a natural transition for me to, to find something else. If to you move will. out of that industry. Um, yeah. But the one thing, you know, when, when I got into that, I realized was most people aren't willing to travel. Most people aren't willing to do the little things that, 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 that you need to do to really move up and, and be successful in an organization. So when I started in the satellite with direct TV, I was willing to go to Chicago if they needed help up there and go to Atlanta. And, and, you know, when they, when they give you jobs, they might give you three in a day and, and, uh, really you can do those in an hour and a half. Right. So, so I showed them that, Hey, I was willing to work from, 7 a.m. to 7 at night if I needed to, to, to get more. And then, you know, I was one that would knock on doors around me. You know, if I was doing an install here, I'd knock on a couple other people's doors and see if they were interested because I'd get a $50 bonus and I could install it in an hour and make really good money. So just kind of thinking outside the box and doing a little bit more than what most people do will get you ahead in life. And I, I really believe in any industry, you can do that. So that's coming from your experience in the past. Yeah. That's coming yep. from seeing your, your family and, and, and the things that they're doing. But it's, it, is th this isn't like, here's the, the direct TV way. I mean, are, so they're giving like, hey, Tim, here's your, here's your three houses that you're hitting because these people signed up in a circuit city or yeah, you yeah. Know, wherever they right, are. Right. You, know, or, you know, go online um, and uh, you know, say, hey, I want direct TV. And then you're saying, well, that's not enough. I need to go get more. Well, I wanted to make more. Yeah. Right. I wanted to, to get ahead in life. And, and at that time we had four kids and they like to eat. 
So, so, so I was one that was <laughs> willing to do whatever do. I need to do. Right. But I really in transitioning back to the electrical business, you know, I was working in the heat every day. I was working in the freezing cold every day. Um, You're in the elements. I was in yeah. the elements. So I really wanted to get out of that, which, you know, getting in direct TV was the same thing. So that's where, um, it really led to the next transition, which was into insurance. So, okay. So we'll talk about that then. So we're getting out of the electrical. We're in direct TV. You're making, how long did you do direct TV? A couple of years? Uh, two years. Two yeah. years. What influences you to, to change? Because here, here again, you're making good money. You know, I, the, the kids are being raised in an environment you want them to be. Everything seems to be going well. Yeah. So we're making another change. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I was looking for something different, really looking to continue to move up into something I would consider more professional. Okay. Um, and this company was actually trying to hire my wife. She was a senior sales manager at MCI at the time and, okay. and doing well. And um, ultimately, she had just gotten a really good promotion. Yeah. And uh, actually, the, the person that she got the promotion over left and started selling insurance. So I, so I knew Jason a little bit. Yeah. Um, and by the way, her promotion was deserved to, to get that over him. Uh, Versus Jason. I think yeah. Jason talked about that yeah. in, in his podcast, right? I don't, I don't know if his, uh, if his perception is the, is, I don't know, Jason, yeah. Jason's supposed to be here today. We might have to, <laughs> we'll he's, sit down and we'll, 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 we'll hash that out finally. Yeah, he's right? probably flying in on his corporate jet. Probably. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so anyway, you know, I, he, he had been talking with her about still coming over because he was, he was just getting started. Um, I actually had a couple buddies from high school that had gotten into insurance. And while I was out working in the heat and in the cold, um, they seemed to have it a little bit easier and, and be making really good money. I saw them golfing a lot, which yeah. I love to golf. And so, um, you know, Melissa said, you, you know, I'm not going to do this. And, and I said, Hey, I think I'm going to see if I can get an interview. And she, so you're only finding out about this through her telling yes. you, Oh, this guy's trying to yeah. recruit me over here and I don't want to yep. do it. Yep. For sure. And then when you said, well, I think I want to do it. What, yeah. What, Cause I'd always, I'd always heard about insurance. Right. And I <clears throat> never in my wildest dreams imagined being in insurance. Right. Didn't have any sales experience. I didn't have any people experience. Um, but what I did, did have, did you, you did what I did have was, TV. was work ethic. Yeah. But at DirecTV, I mean, you're you're still selling. I start. I learned it a little bit, right? And 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 after you get into business, you realize that hey, we've all got a little bit of sales experience, right? Where if you're married, you're selling someone something, right? Like right. if you need twenty bucks from your dad, which you know that was a hard, always a hard sale for me, right? Yeah. Like, but but you're always you're always selling through life in little ways. But I really didn't have the experience. And at that point in our life. Um, we started making a little bit more money and, and it was really hard to think about transitioning and losing that guaranteed income because again, four kids and they like to eat and they're getting into sports and, and they're way more expensive. So, so really I was taking a chance on myself. Right. And, and what, what is Melissa saying in this whole time? What, is, what are her thoughts? Because you, you, you do have good money. The kids are getting more expensive as they get older and, now let's go roll the dice. That's a, you know, a, a lot of people, they come into this business, young, single, no kids, build themselves up and then go. Not a lot of people are coming in, right, wrong, or indifferent. I'm saying it's, it's uh, any time is good, but you're coming in with four kids, yeah. a house, bills, a spouse. I'm pretty stubborn and so is she. Yeah. So, um, I said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to go in for that interview. And, and she didn't want me to, um, cause again, she's looking at me and I don't have any sales experience. I've done all right in different things, but, um, so we, we, we decided, Hey, we're going to pray about it. I woke up the next morning and decided I was going to go in for the interview and she still didn't want me to. Right? right. So, so, but I had a piece and, uh, really when I went in for that interview, the one thing that Jeff Miller said that, that really struck me was, you know, if, if you'll do what I ask you to do, I'll do anything in my power to help you be be successful. And and knew I had the work ethic, right? And, and and I knew that's where I would have to set myself apart. And and you're just saying this is a better opportunity. This is yeah. this is a better. It was an opportunity to finally build something for myself. You know, which I hadn't had before. You know, before 
really, if I wanted to make more money, it was really, really work more. It was really do more than anyone else. And, and really in the contracting side, if I wanted to make more money, I'd ask my boss for a raise, which it was going to take money out of their pocket. Right. Right. So, so that wasn't the easiest thing. So wh- what was that process like transitioning over to insurance? It wasn't easy, right? Like, like I learned a lot. Um, number one is, is find someone that is successful and have them mentor you. Okay. You know, so, so I, I learned at an early age in my career, you know, first three months, you don't get around the people that are negative and get advice from them. Right. Or because you're going to have bad days. I had bad weeks, right? I, I remember Melissa calling me during the week. Hey, how much money have you made? How much money have you made? How much money have you made? You know, and, and back my the, phone's about to die. Yeah. 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 Battery yeah, out, right? yeah like, like <laughs> And so Went through a tunnel. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was uh, it was very challenging. You know, there were bad weeks. I had blue engines on the car. I had to put money on credit cards. I had, you, you know, there were there was a lot of stuff in the early years that if I didn't have the right mindset and I didn't have the right people around me, I wouldn't be in this career. Were you were you questioning your decision to to jump into this? At so that? I never questioned my decision because I I saw what other people were making. Okay, and. I think my first year was the only year I didn't make a hundred thousand dollars plus, and that's because I started in July, you know. And and um, but that's got to be hard if you're if you're struggling, and if you're not earning the income you need. Yeah. And you know all the pressures of home. How do you? I mean, you can see people that are successful, but how do you translate that to? I can be successful. I'm going to stick it out. I'm going to, I'm going to get through these challenges. But what's the mindset in those moments? And we talk about kind of that dark moment on the road where it's just you and a little bit of failure. What's the mindset that brings you back to that? My first three months, um, I didn't make hardly any money. I mean, it was, it was tight, but like I said, I'm hard headed. I started this career and I decided this is going to be my career. Like, like I believe that. So I'm just, I'm, I burnt the ships. I, we're, that's we're it, not. right? Like, like this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make it, um, because I, I, I really feel like if you don't do that, there's so many hurdles in this kind of a career. Like right? you hear no a lot. You, you have things pushed where you think you're going to have an incredible week. Yeah, there's just a lot of things that come against you. So, I would celebrate the really little wins. Right, I would celebrate myself getting better. I would, you know, you know, and then the other thing I would tell How you often Mike, is, I mean, a daily, daily, I you'd think. have, yeah, yeah. I would, I would listen to back then it was cassette tapes, right, or or, or CDs uh, of of motivational people. You, you know, now it's podcasts, man. I can I can pull those up every day. Right. Um, a couple things that really got me by um, my faith. Uh, I believe that you don't just wake up and go to work. Right. So, so many things are negative in our lives. Right. Maybe I had a fight with my wife or something happened with my kids. And a lot of people carry that over with them day to day. You know, I, I, I found that getting up early and clearing my mind, you know, and, and I do it by praying and reading the Bible. But, you, you know, however you do that, I think it's necessary, man. You got to you got to start the day fresh. You got to start the day right. You got to start the day with the right mindset. And I was able to do that even though so much negative was going on. I was making very little money money. The other thing I did, Mike, is I humbled myself and I went to my manager and said, "Man, I I need you to get back in the car with me." Something's not right, right? I I I wasn't selling even though I was presenting a lot. And the reason I wasn't selling is because I was asking them if they wanted to do it at the end, right? And, and so I got a lot of, I want to think about it, which everyone's geared to think about it. Right. And so... And just just for context, so you're selling in-home at this point, in-home, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, I was going into people's homes. And, and so um, just one little transition, right? He hopped in the car with me, changed the end of my closing statement from, hey, what do you think? You know, what do you think about this to, hey, what's the best phone number we can get a hold of you at just to make sure you're going to qualify and boom. It just ignited things, you know. I, I remember, you know, Jason was someone that I, I hung around a lot, right? We got in the car together a lot. We we would work together. And, and, and in my, my first two days of training, we went 0 for 13. 
<laughs> you know, and, and that would that would deflate a lot of people. But what I saw out of that is, man, we can get into 13 presentations in two days. So you're seeing the upside. Yeah, you, you've got to see the upside, right? Like everyone's got a, the glass is either half full or half empty. It's all mindset, right? Really. Yeah. You know, how, how important is that moment in the morning that you talked about just to clear your mind? Are you Are you letting go of the weight of what's happened in the past, in the previous day in that moment? Or are you kind of preparing yourself for, uh, you know, the the positive mindset yeah. when adversity comes to you in the day, or is it a little bit of both? Or, you know, what what's pushing you in those? In yeah, I don't think you can ever get rid of it, right? Like like maybe that that fight's not resolved, or I, or, or or those financial situations, or you're not going to get rid of that. I think when I get there in the morning, I'm able to comp- compartmentalize. Yeah, you know, I'm, it, it kind of refocuses what's important for me and what's not important. You know, I'm a big believer in you worry about the things you can control, right? Not the things you can't control. And, and so, um, that, that time in the mornings and a time for me to, Hey, put this stuff on the back burner, per, put the things that are really important to me first and then get back started with, with the day. And then you talk about humbling yourself. Do you feel that sometimes people, are I, I don't know if prideful is the right word, but not wanting to embrace maybe a difficult conversation. I mean, you you kind of ran into that and said, "Hey, yeah. come show me what I'm doing wrong." Yeah. And a lot of people when they're struggling, like, man, I I want to get this feeling out of me. I don't, I don't want to bring any more of this on me. So, how do you humble yourself? How did you come to grips of I need to do this? I need to go say, "Hey, get out in the field with me and, and help me," because not a lot of people are going to want to raise their hand and bring criticism upon themselves. Yeah. Kind of going back, right. My wife is like one of the best salespeople I've ever seen, right? She's the, uh, the people person, the, the talkative one. You know, when I started this career, I was shy. Like, like when I started dating my wife and went over to their house, they were all thought I was, something was wrong with me because I never talked. Right. Like, so, <laughs> so, you know, w- once you get I'm going to leave that comment. Yeah, 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 there you go. So so she was encouraging me, right? She was calling me every day. Hey, what are you doing? How can you get better? Um, and so I had, again, made that commitment. This is it, right? Like, yeah. like I'm going to do this. I'm going to make this happen. So I knew, hey, not making any money. I better get with someone and get back, get some more help. And and I, I think it's more not that, not that um, I'm too prideful. I think it's more that I don't want to admit I'm struggling. And, and most people will go to the other people that are struggling because they feel better about themselves instead of going to a mentor that is successful that'll tell them, hey, you need to maybe work a little harder. Or you need to get back on the systems or you need to do this, this, and this, right? A, a, a great player wants to be coached and they right. want to be coached hard. Yeah, what, why, why would you say you don't want to admit that you're struggling? I would say that's what most people do. They oh, don't want to yeah. admit it, right? It's not as much a pride thing, but more that they don't want to admit they're failing or struggling is, is what I believe. Yeah. Okay. So when did things start to change for you? Really that moment that, that he hopped in the car with me and, and, and uh, we spent the whole day together. And, and, you know, once I changed a couple things and again, Cody was my manager. He, he didn't, do it all for me. Right. When I got back in there, he told me after that first appointment, he said, dude, what are you doing? You know, just do this and you'll see a difference next two appointments. We closed and I did the whole thing. Then right then the confidence level was up here. Right. And, and, and it just kept going from there. So spent a year as an agent, got into management starting the second year. Okay. Um, and and so things were a little different then too, for, you know, the agents and the, the managers listening to this now, you know, we're, you know, there's a different career track today than there was back then. Yeah. So uh, you get into leadership, then what happens? Yeah, so uh, it's time to build a team, you know, and, and uh, so started off and, and, and my philosophy was, look, I, if I can do this, anyone can do this. You know, you're, yeah. you're talking about the guy that was a, an electrical contractor for 20 years before he started in, in the insurance industry. And, it, and really, I felt a little better about myself. It's kind of weird because I'd had success in the other careers, but, you know, I was wearing shorts and, and T-shirts that were dirty. And, and now I'm wearing a suit. And, and it, it really, confidence boost. really it probably shouldn't be that way, but I just felt better about myself yeah. and, and had that confidence. And so I was able to talk to people I knew and... And, and really, I brought a lot of people into the industry that were friends, 
you know, uh, I, I think of Barry and Terry Hogan, my wife, uh, Kathy Meineke, and 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 Brent and Pam Stanton. So many people that are still here and veterans. Um, and you don't do that if you don't believe in yourself sure. or you believe in the systems. Sure. So when when did you transit? Because you had a little bit of time when you were in the home office, right? And you were a director. Yeah. yeah. So what what was that transition like? And then we'll talk about the the last stage of your career. Yeah. So um, spent four years in management with with Jeff and and uh, you know it was really cool because I saw him promoting people out of the agency to their own agencies mm -hmm. and I think over his career he promoted over ten people but. The, the thing about Jeff was, even though I was probably the seventh promotion, he didn't hold me back. You know, he said, hey, I want the, whatever's best for you, whatever you want to do. Our, our, our home office had flown in on president at that time and, and said, hey, I'd like you to become a director and, and talk to Jeff about that. And Jeff gave me the, the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? Like, right? like what this could do for me. And, and when I made the decision with my wife to become a director, he was all about it. You know, and I, I thought that's something that I, I really believe that's something that stuck with me. Do you think it's hard for a leader to let their people grow outside of the nest, so to speak? I think it is in a, in a way because, you know, you don't want to lose your best person. But what you realize and what I realized from Jeff was as you promote people, other see that other people see that and they want to strive to do better and they want to strive to get there. And that's all what, what's always happened with us. It almost validates yeah. the opportunity is, is real for yeah. somebody other than just the owner. Yeah. And, and I would say that at any level, right? Like when I was in AD or an SA, they're called different things back then. That's why I did that. But you know, what I found was the, the people that were holding their people back weren't growing. And the managers, even at that level, that were that were really encouraging their people to excel, encouraging their people to move out and build their own teams, those were the people that were growing. And it's almost the opposite, though, because you think in that moment, it's like, man, I got this guy, Tim. Tim yeah. is just phenomenal. He's out in the field. He's training. He's got this awesome. I don't, if I lose you, yeah. you know, it's, it's like if I'm a, you know, if I, if I have a football team and I, and I lose my, you know, top wide receiver you know, now I got a, I got a hole that I have to fill, but it, it's, it's different here, but it's, it's almost opposite sometimes where it's like, I want to retain, I don't want you to go anywhere. And it, it just, it's amazing how you observe very early on that if you promote people out, if you give this opportunity to other people, if you don't hold people back, that's something others rise into. Yeah. And I, I'm a big believer in, in, uh, building relationships and, and, and putting other people first. And, and, uh, I really believe that, you know, you can talk a big game that, hey, I want the best for you, but people know if you really do or not. And and so when other people see that, that hey, this person's real, right? Like like they really want the, the, the best for me. They really want what I want. Um, it causes people to really start working harder and, and, and doing more. And, and, and then all of a sudden your team starts to snowball, yeah. you know, and I, I think that's a good thing. You start leaning into it. It's, yeah. it's, it's where culture starts to take off. It's no longer a job. It's no yeah. longer a place that you dread to be at. You know, people talk, we have a family environment. Don't, I mean, you think that's maybe where some of that comes from of uh, your best interests are truly at, at the heart of what I'm trying to do. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, you know, at the agency, we definitely, the, the higher up I've moved, it, it's kind of, I, I really believe impacted more, you know, you see your managers doing it now. And um, I've got a great group of managers that really care about their people and, and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll go through the list and some of them that struggle, it's more about them, right. Than, yeah. than their people. And, and, you know, to me, I always want to, you know, I always want to help my people get what they want and then I'm going to get what I want, you know, and, and that's proved true through my entire career. Right. Yeah. That's, that's great. Um, so you came to the home office, times were different then, right. The, the, the company Liberty national, uh, is kind of, trying to find its way. It, it been in business for a very long period of time. Uh, kind of had an old business model that yeah. had become antiquated. You know, we sometimes it's like the blockbuster, you know, eventually people stop going to rent DVDs, right? Yep. And and the company has to shift its mindset and its approach. And that wasn't necessarily an easy thing to to go through. And then on top of that, you're in the front lines because you're in the home office. So I imagine there was there was a period of time where you're you're trying to find your way almost and, and, and take me through those thoughts and you stayed obviously. Sure. And not everybody did. So 
again, when I get into a position, I, I commit to that position. You know, it's, I, I always realize it's going to be difficult. Yeah. And, and so I, I think in my mind that makes it a little easier, but you know, I became a director. You just embrace. Yeah. It's going to be, it, right? instead like, of arguing or, or having a battle about it, it's hard. Just like, oh, I already knew it was going to be hard. I always, you know, when I look back on my career, I think one of the things that I've done right is I embrace change. Like, when change comes, you're going to change. You're either going to do it early or later, and, and you're going to pay the price if you do it later. Yeah. So I've always jumped on it right away and, and tried to do whatever I could to help us be as successful as possible with that change. Yeah. And so moving into the home office, it was definitely a change. Again, moving into a whole different career set, I found a person that could mentor me. Right. I was new. I, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, but Roger Rich is someone that took me under his wing and, mm. and really mentored me in this that that part of the career field and um, had some su- success as a director, had great teams, had great agency owners. Um, and three years in became the vice president of the worksite division. And, wow. and so that was a, a game changer for me. So um, I was able to learn that market from some of the best people out there what to do, what not to do. Um, and what's you, cool. Cause you were in home before that yeah. to begin with, right? Yeah, I was in home the and two markets that we have at Liberty. You're totally either, different. You're either going into someone's home and you're selling, or you're going to a business yep. and you're selling to the business owner and then meeting with those employees. Yeah, and we, we actually had UA at work, which was a little bit similar. Yeah. And we had closed the globe life home offices in Oklahoma city. And so I got to be part of that enrollment. And that was like something that, that, like a light came on in my, a light bulb in my head, like, Hey, this is a market I want to be in. Yeah. And so, um, when we transitioned, I became a director and, and it was under, under United American. Um, I believe two years in we transitioned to Liberty national. So I had to learn all these different things again. And that's where Roger Rich was so helpful. Um, again, great agency owners became that vice president of the worksite market and had success there. And I'll never forget Steve and, and Roger came in as the new CEO and, and president. And, um, it was, it was actually like a, a great thing. Like, like working with them was a piece of cake. I learned a ton, um, really in the recruiting side more than anything. Sure. And the agency in Springfield came open and, you know, I took the main AD into there to interview and realized they probably weren't. Or the agency owner position. Or the agency Your home office. Position. And yep. hey, let me put you. We went up to a suite in Punakana, Hard Rock Hotel. I'll never forget, right? Overlooking Great the hotel. whole ocean. Yeah. Glass everywhere. Walk in the room. There's fruit. There's, you know, they're living the life, right? Like, and so um, it was all part of getting the person up there to, to realize, hey, this is what you want. We're going to take you to the double queen. Yeah, that's back. right. The garden <laughs> yeah. view for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so uh, went up there and realized it wasn't going to happen. Went back to the room and told Melissa, hey, I'm going to take this. And she was like, are you sure? You know, you're doing well. You're you're maxing your bonuses out. I mean, we're we're doing really well. Stable. At this point. It's a salary. Stable. It's everything's, yeah. And I'm like, no, it's time for me to get back and do what I was wanting to do all along and build my own build my own business. And so I went into Steve or actually called him and said, Hey, you know, it's kind of a hard phone call, right? Saying, Hey, I want to get back in the field. If he says no, he realizes, Hey, you want to be back in the field, but I'm still keeping you. Yeah. He said no, you know? And (laughs) and so it was a, uh, a deal where I got off the phone and was like, Oh man, what just happened? You know, we had a director just torch my career. (laughs) We had a director's meeting two weeks later and Steve called me in the office with him and Roger and, and, uh, Roger's the CEO. Roger's the CEO. And and they said, hey, Roger said, you know, I, I heard you want to do this. We've talked about it several times, and, and we're going to let you do this. But I need you to be a role model. I need you to be on the systems. I need you to, to show everyone what we're trying to do mm-hmm. and be successful at it. And so, you know, I felt a little bit of pressure there. Right, right. <laughs> right. Oh. So that was in... August of 2012, so the year was pretty much over, but the, the agency was on pace to do about $725,000. For the year. For the year. And we ended up doing 930 I think. Um, people committed to the systems. Jason Adams got it started and, and was, was killing it. So um, it was a start for sure. 
you said something earlier, and I, I want to come back to that because this is another challenging transition, and you kind of have a theme in your life of your you're putting yourself in these challenging moments. You're the status quo is good. You're comfortable, but you have a desire for more. And then you put yourself in this uncomfortable situation. And I think what you said is so good is when you embrace up front that this change is going to be painful or that this change, this is going to be a challenge. Yeah. Just hit it up front and then you make it easy on yourself. And, and don't you think that so many times when people are kind of confronted with change in their life or knowing that this change is coming, they kind of run from the pain. They run from the the work and the energy and the time that it's going to take. So they're always having to revisit it. Do you think do you think maybe that mindset shift is is key to all these transitions for you? Yeah, it definitely is. And and I believe when you go through change, um, in a lot of ways it brings out new truths. Mm. So in other words, like when we, we we we've always piloted different things for the company. We piloted Epic. Yeah. Right. At that time we were really focusing on how many businesses my people were getting into every week and and they were averaging about 60 and 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 so they were doing well right like and and then we started this epic and when we had to program you know when when everything tracked it we were down to averaging 30 so i told steve that hey you're crazy this is wrong slowing you down yeah slowing us down and and but the realization was people were just telling you they were doing this right everyone's just doubling their numbers (laughs) and so again a light bulb came on right like like you, you know it, really a big part of my life is, is proving it, not just saying it. Yeah. And, and so that, that helped us to prove, Hey, where were you at? And we were able to raise our numbers because of that piloting that. Um, and, and, and so I, I think again, truth, right. Truths will come out when you pilot different programs and, and you jump into change because it shows you a lot about yourself rather than resisting it. Yeah. Most people are really, afraid of change. And listen, change is uncomfortable. Change is hard. Change is all the things that help you grow. Right. Right. Comfort being comfortable is the enemy of growth. And and I just don't want to get comfortable. I'm 57. I still don't want to be comfortable. Right. Yeah. Like you mentioned, we did 9.5 million. Our goal is $12 million this year. It's not, you know, when you guys called and said, Hey, what's your, take it to the bank versus what's your MTXE number. It was 12 million, both of them because that's what we're going to do, yeah. right? Like, like I've got incredible managers and incredible agents. And, and even though they're doing well, we've all got to look in the mirror every day and look at ourselves and, and decide, hey, did we really do what we need to do to have success in this industry? And I, always, I always carried a, a picture of my kids when I started in this industry and, and my wife because my commitment was to them, right? Like, like I want, that was my why in getting into an industry like this. I wanted to make sure they had a better life. And that probably keeps you from, I guess, keeping the, the back door open that, yeah. you know, if this doesn't work out, I'll just, I'll go back and sell direct TV. Yeah. My agency owner, Jeff would, would always say, hey, what, you know, on Mondays was our big day in the office and we'd spend a little too much time out eating lunch. What'd you go to Joplin for lunch? You know, a two hour lunch, right? Like, I think that's a natural thing. Like if, when I'm in sales and I'm starting and, and maybe I'm struggling and, 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 you know, maybe now I can get on my phone and, and get on Netflix and, and there's ways to kill time. You're so distracted. And, and there's so many distractions in life. The thing about being commission only and not punching a time clock, if I had to go back and we had the apps back then, I would have a time clock app and I would punch that thing when I'm in my first business. I would shut it off when I take a break and just really look at, hey, what's my day really look like? Because we waste a lot of time during the day. And, and that's what that picture was for. Yeah. That's a great. Is there an app that does that? I mean, yeah. there is. I was going to say, I think. We, I was going to recommend it to you. you. Go, oh, oh, no, I'm just right. yeah, yeah. I didn't punch in when I started this. <laughs> yeah, that's week, right. So yeah. Uh, no, I thought that's a great idea if, the, if that doesn't exist um, to, uh, to develop that. Yeah. So, all right. So let's go back here now. Um, hey, I want to be the agency owner. Sounds great. Was there a moment, you know, it, what did I just do? <laughs> there were a lot of moments. Yeah. I mean, when I got into the agency, I had um, really one of my best friends, agency director, um, two, or, two or three others, that when you make change, not everyone's going to change. Mm. You know, and, and, you know, I'm blessed in the fact that 
some of the some of the people that didn't want to work as you, you know the systems like they need to be work for us to take off stayed with me and they're so some of my best agents and they they do an incredible job and some of my best friends um but listen change is hard and and so i had to find some managers that were willing to step up and work really hard and 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 help me with the systems and make sure things were in place to get us on the trajectory right to keep moving forward right like when you have things going well it's easier to keep the ball rolling than to get the ball rolling you, I, I just I don't want to gloss over what you just said either, yeah. though, is that you had basically friends that you had recruited into the business. They're in leadership roles in your organization when you're the agency owner. And you're the agency owner. It's, it's 1099. It is what your agency produces for the week. That's your paycheck. You're paying the bills. You're keeping the lights on. You're paying the staff. There's tremendous financial pressure as an owner to, to keep the business running, plus your personal life, right? So... On top of that, you've got your friends are in leadership roles and you said they're not necessarily willing to do the systems. So that's another very hard decision to go to somebody that you know from outside the business and say, hey, listen, this isn't working out yeah. in this role. And, and I was fortunate that the, they're good friends. Um, they realized that, hey, I, I would rather just be an agent and do well because you know, I've got all the freedom in the world and, and, and I can do well. And, and really any position in our company, you can do really well if you focus. Right. Sure. Right. And, and what we were doing at that time, and really this is probably two years in a year and a half into being an agency owner that, that finally was like, Hey, we gotta, we gotta make this transition and, and move to the people that are going to enforce the systems and be willing to really put in the work because, when you change everything, you're putting in time, right? Like, yeah. like you're going to, and, and it's time that you don't always have success. And, the, and so I think that's important to realize that, 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 you know, any, any position in our company, what, whatever I move up to, you know, from agent to SA to AD, to GA, or GA, AD, RAD, agency owner, anytime you make a move, you go back. Yeah. And you build and you've got to put in the work again. And you, you know, the worst thing you can do is move to a new position and, and think I've, I've made it. Well, that's another key mindset point here though, is so many times it's, I've worked really hard to get this promotion. <sighs> okay. Now I can relax. And it's the opposite. Yeah. It's the total opposite. It's what you did to get there is not what it's going to take to stay there. Yep. And it's definitely not what it's going to take to get to that next level. So where does that mindset come from for you? And, and just, I mean, let's talk through that. Yeah. You know, I think that's again, back the way from my parents and, and growing up, they were never satisfied, right? Yeah. Like, like they always put in the work and the hard work and, and you, you know, I, I, our first meeting this year as a, a management team, we talked about, you know, it's, it's a year to, to raise the bar. It's a year to sell out. And we had a great year last year. I yeah. right? like, but, but you've got to have that mindset. You know, I, I can't as a leader, um, allow myself to get stagnant, allow myself to not show up on Mondays, right. You know, allow myself to be comfortable with being comfortable. And, and so, you, you know, what I've realized in this career field is, is as long as I'm doing the things from the front, as long as I'm you know, I try to show up by before six every Monday. We, you know, we got a kind of a competition of who's going to show up first, right? Like and camping out in the park and get lot. things ready. And, and and because Monday's our day, we set up our week, right? Like by the end of Monday, if I'm not wiped out and and driven crazy, yeah, um, then I've done something wrong. Wow. And, and so that's why Tuesday morning I've got to get up and I've got to reset my mind and and get back to where I need to be. Yeah, and I think sometimes people you know, when you experience success, like, like you've experienced and you're right over $9 million in, 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 in a year, which the only person that had done it before you wrote the most business in, in the year prior. Um, so, I mean, you are at the pinnacle, you're at the top, top of your game. Everything's moving in the right direction. You know, sometimes people feel like, Hey, I got all this success. Things are going really, really well. And you don't realize that a record breaking year, this year is great, but if you do the exact same thing next year that you did this year, that's a complete bust. Yeah. It's a yeah. complete bust. We start over every day. Absolutely. You know, and, and, um, of that 9.5 million, I didn't write a dime. 
you know, they, they don't let me go to enrollments anymore. So last enrollment I went to, there were 10 eligible and I wrote 12 people. So it was over at that <laughs> point, right? Like, so, so, um, but I've got incredible leaders, right? Like, like my job's to help develop people. And, and so, um, you know, I, nothing makes me happier than to see my people be successful. And, and so if I can keep them on the right path and, and the other cool thing about my leadership team is they don't settle, right? They're, they're not settling for us closing 20 cases in a week. You know, they want 30 or more every week and, and, and they want their teams to be successful in, in, in their downline. And, and, and really, again, it's all about the relationships. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to give you a hundred percent of me. Are you going to give, give me back a hundred percent? And so, so I, I credit it all to that leadership team. They do a great job. Well, that's what I want to ask you next is, is how important is leadership development, mentorship uh, to you and, and the team that you've built and, and developed in, in your organization? Yeah, I think it's vital, right? Like, like I still think you've got to have a mentor, right? Like, like I still call yourself and Steve and get advice and, and, and I don't care who you are in the company and, and how well you're doing you every once in a while you got to be able to vent to someone sure and you got to be able to vent up right yeah. like like my wife someone that's great to allow me to vent to her and she talks me through things and but yourself and and, and Steve I don't go back down and vent to my people right? right like like so um you know I'm the 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 thing that I think your my leadership team would say is is I answer my phone you know, if they call me, they need anything. I'm gonna, I'm either gonna answer, or I'm gonna call them right back, and and so I'm there for them. I'm guiding them in that, and and in turn, I think they do the same thing, which is good. And how do you see kind of that from your time with Jeff Miller, and first seeing the hey, give give this opportunity to people, don't hold them back. Yeah, allow them to move up. You know, you you just won the Legacy Award for Globe Life. Uh, at the Globe Life Achievement Awards, and so for everybody to kind of know what that what that really means is is Globe Life owns multiple insurance companies, insurance distributions, um, and you know we're one of, of of a few, one of three that we really recognize field work in. And so to win these awards, it's a it's a big deal. You know, you're you're the the top of of not just Liberty National, but of multiple companies. So you know, you were just down here received a legacy award for uh, promoting people to the agency owner position, mm-hmm. for promoting people into the home office. And, and so how does that kind of mindset that you first learned in the very beginning translate today? And then how do you try to keep, keep that in the front and carry that on? Yeah, you know, starting for Jeff, you know, like I said, he promoted several people. But I, I think the big thing that hit home with me I mean, they, we had the number one agency a couple of years in a row with Jeff and, and seeing how this career changed people's lives, mm. you know, not just this year, but for generations. I mean, just, just crazy how a career like this can help a person financially and, and help their families. And, and so I saw that at an early age and then there's nothing that makes me prouder now than to see some of my people get out there on their own in their agencies and have success right? and see what that's going to, you know, they're early still in their career. So still struggling, right? Still, still getting over some of the roadblocks they need to get over and and getting towards that higher success level. But to see what it's going to do for them and their families in the future is just, just huge. You know, when I took over the agency, I would say our average age of a person in the agency was probably 40 you know, now my average age in the agency is probably 22, you know? So, so I I think that if you ask me what my biggest regret would be, it would probably be not starting when I was 21 or 22, (laughs) right? I started when I was 37. So, you know, with the goal in mind to to be able to do things that people do in retirement at age 65 and 70 in my fifties, right? you know, and, and, and fortunate for me, I may have been able to, we've been able to do that. So do you see that pushing down into your agency as well. So you've got kind of the middle managers, the agency directors, the uh, the supervising agents. Does this mindset now translate and help create growth of, I'm not going to hold someone back. I want, I want them to go be successful. I want you to do so well that you're not on my team anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, and listen, it, it's still hard, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. when you, when you move into management, you're, 
you're new there and you haven't seen that, hey, promoting people really actually helps you more than it hinders you. It's hard to lose your best person. Um, but what's cool about the agency is is we've got people that you know, are invested in rental properties and, and short and long-term VRBOs and, 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 and a lot of different things, um, because of the success that they've had. And, and it's just really, again, it's cool to see how many lives have been changed, right? I'm, I'm right. talking about people that were in nursing school and, and, and yeah. people that were truck drivers and right. furniture salesmen, right? Like, like electricians, we right. all came from somewhere. Right. And most of us didn't go to college to be an insurance person, right? right. Or high Any, school. I don't know yeah. anybody that did. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, well, Matt Keller is in your agency, right? Yep. And, yep. you know, of course, Matt Keller has been on the podcast and he talked about his whole, you know, life sure. coming in. And, you know, do, do you ever look back and, and, see how this mindset that you've had of embracing change, of going through it, of allowing people to have opportunities greater than you. And you kind of touched on it, but just to see the success that brings other people. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, again, that's, um, that's probably my favorite thing about the industry is seeing, you know, how a person like Matt and section A housing, right? Like, like, my second child was born in a, in a hospital for Medicaid or, right. you, you know, a single and, wide trailer. And, yeah. And it's like, it doesn't matter where you're at or where you've came from. It's what you put into this career. This company's willing to pay you whatever you want, whatever you're worth, they're going to pay you. They, you know, and the bar has been raised so much in the last 10 years. You know, we've got managers in the organization making a, a million dollars. Right. Right. We got agents making a million. It doesn't matter what position. It's what you put into it that can make a difference. It's kind of crazy to say, you know, your agency was on pace to do 700,000 the first year that you, you came in there. And now that's, you know, probably not a very good month for you. Yeah. No, you, you know, it, it's not. But, you, you know, I look back at 2020, you know, during COVID and we were able to grow that year. And that taught me a lot. Yeah. Taught me a lot about what pe people are willing to do and, and the sacrifices they're willing to make to have success and, and to keep things going. And, and tr to me, I, I think that was our best year. Mm, yeah. To grow during that year was, was just, something. Just the, so the growth from the organization, yeah. but then the challenge and the embracing. And, and to see it from a home office standpoint where they allowed us to do things that we'd never done before, right? Like, like hey, you can call customers. You can, you, you can do things over the phone. And, and, and everyone, it, to me, it was the greatest um, show of a teamwork thing in, that, that I've ever been part of. Yeah, it definitely was a, a challenging time for sure. You know, it was it was a time where we're trying to figure out, uh, you know, the, the path through the obstacle, yeah. but uh, people like you with that, that mindset is, is definitely what. Yeah. You know, I see, I see where Matt was when he started, where he is now, right? Like, like I'm able to see those things where Bruce Lee Alley started and where he is now, right? Yeah. Like, like you're seeing that success. Um, Scotty Souther was two years watching us before he started with us. You know, and even physically meet the person. Didn't didn't he went to school with my with with, with Matt and with our kids and, yeah. and so um it's kind of interesting because now we've got a lot of people in our agency that my kids went to school with. Right. And and so cool. yeah, to to see that as and and to see people again changing their lives is yeah. is really neat. Yeah, and you talk about Scott Southern, yeah. you know, going through starting in COVID, all the challenges, working from home virtually, yeah. how we do that. Tim yeah. Fuller would be another one. Yeah. You know, and both just, of them agency owners now. Yeah. You know, Tim in Kansas City and Scott yep. in Salt Lake. So, you know, just exciting to see that legacy and that mindset, how that can pay this forward. Yeah. And you see it and, and, you know, being an agency owner for 12 years, I see it all the time as, you know, where people start and then, and then they start to move up and they struggle yeah. and then they move up again and they struggle. And they, so you really learn a lot about people, you know, and, and who's willing to overcome adversity. Right. Uh, you, you know, I, I think you said it to our agency one time, you know, to be successful in this industry, just don't quit. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I would add to that, do more than most people are willing to do. Do yeah. more people than I do more than I ask you to do. Yeah. You know, if you really want someone to mentor you and give you advice and, and someone that's successful, you got to show them more. Right. Right. You got to earn that. And, and that's what I've always strived to do. Well, that, that kind of ties into what I want to say here next or ask you is we talk about your success. We talked about your startup and some of those challenges 
you know, if, if I'm, if I'm listening to this right now, if I'm watching this or if I'm in the audience and I'm struggling, I'm thinking, man, this is, this is all great. And it's awesome to hear about your success, but I'm still in that moment that I, I just, I, you know, I, I, I got to get out of this rut. How do I do it? What would be your advice to that person? What's the mindset they need to have? What's the, and what, what are the actions? What are the things they need to do? Well, I was there. I mean, sure. it, you know, it happened to me. And really, that's where I, I think you've got to have that mentor, right? And then you you got to find the successful person. Maybe your your manager, get them back in the car with you. Find out what you're doing wrong and what you can change. Um, don't be afraid to hear something that they might tell you, like, you need to work harder, right? Or 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 why are you just doing what's average? You know, that's the first thing I would say. Do above average work. You know, don't, if I tell you to get into 60 businesses, get into 80, you know, uh, you know, I was, I was reading a deal the other day that, you know, m- you know, where Mike here, y- yourself, um, you may have four presentations and close three, but you know, so you're a great closer. So why don't I get 20 presentations to close three, right? right. If I'm starting. So, so in other words, it's not a closing scenario. It's a, it's a, it's a, uh, uh, activity, it's activity. It's an activity problem. So, so I, I don't think there's anyone really, I, I mean, I've seen so many people that I thought, man, there's no way they're going to have success. There's just no way. And they're successful because they outwork everyone. Yeah. And they have that mindset. They lean into it. And lean people might've said that about me when I started, right? Like, like I'm sure people no said way. it about me. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, Tim, uh, it, it's been great having you here and, just hearing your story and everything that's culminated to uh, to make you into the the person you are. You know, I appreciate everything you do for the company, and I know your people appreciate everything you do for them as well. So, just so good to have you here. We got one more thing, uh, as you know, as as part of our uh, tradition on the Level Up Lifestyle Podcast, is you get a bobblehead for uh, for for coming in here, and then you know when we're up in the studio, you know, has a little table and it has the bobbleheads of everyone <laughs> who's who's been on the show. Um, and uh, so, but anyway, so we've got we've got your bobblehead here. Um, we have aptly named him Tiny Tim. That's what I'm looking forward to, right? Tiny Tim. So here, yeah, this is Tiny Tim here. I like to present this to you. Here is here is Tiny Tim. Oh, thank you. All right, yeah. there you go. There you go. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. So, uh, it, you, you know, same, same question I want to ask you with, with, with your bobblehead here. If you could go back in time and, and talk to yourself in the beginning, when you're all getting started, what piece of advice are you giving yourself? I mean, it's really what we talked about. You know, commit is the first thing. You know, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, right? Like, like. I struggled, but I would install some satellites on the weekend to make extra money if I needed to. Yeah. But you got to commit and say, this is my career. And then really do more than people ask you to do. Right. I, I, I was under the impression immediately that it's going to take me a while to learn how to do this. So if I do more, I'm going to learn quicker. Yeah. And, and I think that's a key to our industry. You know, sell out, do more, and then get that mentor. Get that positive mentor, the one that's going to be honest with you. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Appreciate you taking the time for everyone. And uh, thank you so much. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Thanks for joining us today. We hope this episode has inspired you on your path to success. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next story. See you soon on the Level Up Lifestyle Podcast.